Good morning. I'm getting ready to go ice fishing today and thought I might bring you along if you was interested. I'll be fishing for cusk today and also lake trout. I put in a new snowmobile trail yesterday, a half a mile. I've been wanting to do that for about 10 years now. So I got that blazed in yesterday, bushwhacked my way down through the woods. So now I've got a direct shot uh, right from the cabin, uh, right out onto the lake. And I'll be snowmobiling down the lake roughly about 15 miles. I'll be bringing this fish house with me. It's a two-man fish house. It's the width of the snowmobile and it trucks right along just like you don't even know it's behind you. And then I have my ice fishing gear behind that. So I will see you later on today once I get down to my spot. What you're looking at here, that's my snowmobile. It's a 2007 Summit. It's the uh, paddle track. It goes through enormous amounts of snow. Uh, behind that is my two-man fish house. You can see it's not much taller than a set of snowshoes. It's big enough to get in, sit down. Uh, you cannot stand up in it, but it uh, trucks right along nicely behind the fish house. And then behind that one, I have a one-man fish house. Roughly the same height and all that, it's only half the length. So uh, that I grab when it's just myself going. I've got someone that's supposed to be coming up later on this week to ice fish with me. So that's why I am putting out the two-man fish house today. So hopefully later on today I can show you some lake trout. And then I will be fishing until uh, 10 o'clock tonight, maybe later, depending on if the cusk are biting or not. Uh, we'll see how all that plays out as the day progresses. So, Well, welcome back. I'm set up on the lake. This is my fish house. This is where it's going to set until Tuesday of next week. I'm up here for about five days worth of fishing. I'll just give you a little, little scan of the lake here. And as you can see, I've got the lake all to myself. No other fish houses, no nothing. What you see over there sticking out of the bucket is my uh, cuss traps. I have tip-ups in right now. I'm fishing for salmon and lake trout. And about 6 o'clock tonight, I will pull out the regular tip-ups that have flags on them and all that. And I will I'll give you a close-up of them cuss traps here in a few minutes. But I will swap out my tip-ups for the cuss traps. Uh, as I start to fish for cusk. Tonight on the menu is beans and hot dogs. <laughs> I have a big tub of beans and hot dogs all cooked up. I just got to put them on the heater to warm them up. I will be fishing until about 10 o'clock tonight. I am in search of cusk. Burbot. I like to call them cusk, but with any... Just wanted to take a minute and show you my rig. That's my uh, Skidoo Summit. It's a 2007 with a paddle track on it. What I really wanted you to see was the gear on the back of it. Uh, that knapsack you see there, that is a full campsite. Everything from food to a top to warm clothing. And under that is a double bitted axe uh, tied on with them bungee cords. And under that is some cordage. <laughs> or toe strap, or you call it whatever you want to call it, but there's uh, 50 feet of some heavy duty rope there. And on top of that is a set of military surplus snowshoes. Um, that is what my snowmobile does not leave the, the cabin without all that gear on it. Uh, I am 15 to 20 miles from the cabin uh, with nothing in between, so if I need a campsite quick it's on the back side of that snowmobile always 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 never 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 do I leave the cabin 
uh, without uh, my gear. And up on front, I think you can see it, there's a set of saddlebags uh, that has all of my stuff for fishing and also some safety equipment in there. Everything from fire starting materials to uh, you name it. I will I will go through them bags in a uh, pro maybe in this maybe in this trip, but I, I'm not sure. But I will go through them bags and I will show you what I consider uh, stuff that should be on a snowmobile uh, at all times. I do this stuff alone, so it's not like I got a backup buddy behind me with a snowmobile. I need to make plans to uh, save myself. And behind that is my equipment for ice fishing. Uh, that long stick you see standing up there, that is probably the most important piece of equipment in that sled. When you, It's a crotch stick, and sometimes when you catch a big fish, they get hung up on the ice uh, four feet down. Your swivel will get hung up, your marker will get hung up. Uh, so I've lost a fish or two by that happening. So I made that crotch stick up, and that goes ice fishing with me every trip now. If my lure uh, gets hung up on the bottom of the ice, I can slide down the line, line and uh, unhook it uh, very easily, uh, especially on big fish. When they start hitting the 10 pound marker, that line uh, saws itself into the bottom of the ice, so that's why I created uh, that thing. If you look off in the distance, you can see my uh, fur bows that I was telling you about. Turn the camera. You can see them fur bows out there. And that's what I had to follow the other night in the uh, snowstorm. those uh, fur bows they go out to my last trap so <laughs> that's how we made sure not to lose my equipment and there's my fish house uh, I built that fish house uh, eight years ago uh, now that's the same top that was on it eight years ago so uh, it's time now to uh, put a new top on it and that'll be uh, next summer's project also I wanted to bring you down here look at my trap that right there is an oak fish trap that I built about 20 years ago. I used to uh, make and sell those uh, years ago. I sold them for $15 a piece, $75 a set. So in today's market, that's a pretty good deal for an oak ice trap tip up. For you new people getting into ice fishing, it doesn't take a million dollar fish house to ice fish. Uh, I find these kind of shacks, um, better than the store-bought ones. They are warmer, number one. You're up off the ice and snow, number two. And I uh, got a buddy heater in there. That place is 70 degrees. Uh, I have them pop up fish houses. Uh, I would not recommend them to anyone. I spent a night out in one uh, just a week or so ago and I about froze to death because with the same buddy heater I'm using today, I was not able to heat that thing uh, through the night. I fished all night for what's called a sea smelt. But anyways, uh, in the old days, this is what everybody did. They built a fish house. Uh, put a little pride in it. I enjoy building fish houses. There's my sled and my gear behind the sled. Here's a tour of the inside of the fish house. It'd be kind of hard for me to show you everything that's in here. But I'd like to. There's a bench. I have a 20 pound propane cylinder under the bench. I heat the place with a buddy heater. And over here is my bench where I sit. I have a wool blanket that I've been trucking around for ice fishing for 30 years in my pack. Makes a good place to sit. I'll take you up here and show you out the window a little bit. Kind of tough cameras don't like this dark to light, but let's see what we can do. Here's my view. Well, welcome to the fish house. I'm out in the lake today. I've been here four days. It's the first day that it hasn't been around zero with the wind blowing at least 30 miles an hour, sometimes 40. It's the first time I've been able to pull out the camera. Uh, just way too windy to go outside of the fish house. To, I'd like to give you a little tour. 
I'm going to show you the good stuff and I'm going to show you the bad stuff. Uh, you know, if I'm going to show you my bucks and all that and some of my big fish that I've caught. Now, well, some years and some trips, uh, the fishing just, you can't, can't seem to get on top of them. So I've been here four days with the foul weather and the wind. Uh, I managed to catch two cusk, uh, one small salmon, so nothing too powerful. But today, I got high hope. Today is uh, nice and sunny out. The wind is finally let up. I've got my five traps in. I'll be able to move around a little bit today. And uh, maybe I can get on to a, a nice lake or something. I've had trips in the past that's been exactly that way. Uh, nothing for three, four days and then end up with a eight to a 10 pound lake trout or a 10 pound cusk. Uh, I've done that many times. So I don't get discouraged. I just keep working at it. But as I said, I would like to have brought you along for a few more uh, outings this week, but it's just been way too cold and windy outside of this fish house. Uh, you can see I've got plenty of room in here. It's nothing big. It's six feet long. It's three feet wide. It's the width of a snowmobile. It, you can sit down. I got a little bit of headroom. You cannot stand up in it. I have a big picture window here. I will, as I said, I'll take you around. Where you're setting is if I had somebody with me, uh, that's where they would be setting. So today I brought you along to set outside the fish house and I will turn your camera around so that you can look out the window and see the view that I've had for four days. We also had got a you know, massive snowstorm out here. I've been fishing until 11 o'clock at night for cusk and uh, it was so snowy the other night that you couldn't hardly see the front end of the snowmobile, uh, just plain white out conditions. So I went to shore, you'll see I got some uh, fur bows, and I had to make a, a fur bow path out to my out to my five traps because I couldn't see them. I, my snowmobile trail would drift in uh, just about as fast as I would drive it. So I put uh, probably, I don't know, 10 bows all the way out to my last trap so that I could drive the snowmobile from bow to bow and uh, find my traps because I have lost my equipment before in snowstorms and stuff like that on these big lakes. Uh, you get down in the center of them and there's just no, uh, no bearing or anything. So, well, I don't want to ramble, but I just wanted to bring you along and update you on uh, how this trip has been going. I've had a blast. Uh, I, I might not have caught a fish, but as I said early in the video, got myself a nice porcupine uh, that will end up in my Dutch oven. So uh, it's been, as far as that goes, I've got plenty of meat that I'm going home with this trip. So might not be fish, but I got a week's worth of eating on that porcupine. So <laughs> wow game it is. So yeah, you take it easy and I'm going to just spin you around here for a minute and just show you what's out, out, out my window here. That's my closest trap, <laughs> right outside the window. <laughs> Anyways, I've got two traps down there to the east. And then behind me to the north, I have three traps. Roughly stretched out, I'm back of me about a half a mile. And out here, I am just under uh, two tenths of a mile from the fish house. I use a snowmobile to get out to my traps. I'm fishing everything today, uh, right down on bottom with a big sucker. Uh, well, I wouldn't say big, he's about six inches long. Uh, them are hard to come by in the winter time. They can sell you a lot of big ones, but I like the ones that are around six inches, uh, seven inches tops. Uh, I'm fishing about a foot off bottom uh, in about uh, anywhere from 30 to 70 feet of water. Um, and I've done really well that way for these Lakers, so that's my hope today is to ice a, a uh, eight plus pound lake trout. Let's see what happens. Oh, the same thing with a cusk. I'd be just as happy with a cusk. Uh, a lot of people call them burbot up in Canada. I call them both. But anyways, uh, I am a happy camper if I can get myself a 10 or 12 pound uh, burbot. So let's see what happens. You can make yourself right at home. Uh, very easy to make one of these fish houses. I think this fish house cost me about $65 to build it. It's I've been using it now for eight years. I've had fish houses that I've used for 20. Uh, I used to have big ones, eight, eight foot by eight foot, 
uh, six foot by ten foot but as the older you get you need to uh, downsize and you need to make them more portable so that they're easier to get on and off the ice like I said you could build this place here for sixty five dollars uh, a far cry from those uh, pathetic folding ones that they sell in the store I've used them they're cold uh, they're damp uh, this place is bone dry you're on a nice wooden floor uh, I about froze to death uh, down on the coast here not too long ago so as you can see everything that I ice fish with uh, you can make yourself right at home you uh, I, earlier in the video I showed you my uh, homemade cuss traps and I showed you my homemade uh, tip-up traps uh, all the hardware for the tip-up traps uh, comes from a hardware store you can order the flags online the fish house is very simple to put together so uh, to me when when we all got into ice fishing you know I got into ice fishing when I was about 10 years old uh, you couldn't that was when I had my first fish house and uh, you couldn't afford to and that, that kind of all the gear that they have nowadays wasn't even on the market back then uh, and I've caught lots and lots and lots of fish over the years. The only thing that's not sto store-bought for me now is the ice auger. I do use a snowmobile to get around, but that's not a necessity for, for getting out here. A hand ice auger, a chisel. My chisels are homemade. I use uh, ice chisels when, uh, like I punched my holes here a couple days ago, and some of the holes I just keep open and come back and drop a trap down the same hole. Uh, but, you know, ice auger fish house traps you're good to go and usually the fishing's pretty good so keep that in mind when you're buying your tackle uh, sometimes you don't have to buy absolutely everything this is a poor man's sport uh, it was when I got into it anyways it was a poor man's sport to get into ice fishing because everyone had homemade traps everyone it wasn't it was not a, a store-bought trap out there and it can be that way for you too. This stuff is easy to come by. A stick, a fishing line, a sinker and a hook is all you really need to catch fish. So, I'm gonna have some lunch now. Uh, I put a pot of water on the uh, buddy heater here and out in the fish house I always have some cup of soups out here. A handy thing to have for lunch. It's very good, tasty. If you're cold it'll warm you right up. Uh, put a little hot water in it. You know how a cup of soup is. And uh, that's what I usually have for lunch. So I'm going to lunch and then we're going to fish the rest of the afternoon and s see what we can come up with. So, I, I wanted to add what's in this fish house. I have a uh, full kitchen that's in a little tiny uh, metal file cabinet box. I take that thing everywhere. It fits in my dog sled behind the snowmobile. Uh, if I'm going even in the back of the pickup, I'll toss that in. I throw it in the boat. Uh, it's a one burner stove is in there, tank of propane, some tea, some hot chocolate, macaroni and cheese, stuff like that. So that if I actually really needed to spend the night in this fish house, I have a full kitchen in that box as well as uh, a little bit of groceries that would that would carry me the night so that I can spend the night as well as have supper. I like to think of this as a cabin, not just a fish house. I have I can either stay here or I can stay at the cabin uh, in between. If I had problems with the snowmobile and had to spend the night, I really could spend the night in here. I have two heat sources. I have the buddy heater that I showed you earlier in the video, and I also have a one burner stove in that kitchen and both of them will hook up to the 20 pound tank of propane as well as I have two one pound cans that uh, of the propane and my ice auger runs on propane the little one pound cylinders so I have three pounds in them little tiny cans plus I have a 20 pound tank so if I have a problem with a regulator or something like that I do have an alternative heat source uh, here in the fish house if if it came to that we needed to spend the night and the other night we were in whiteout conditions uh, it did let up before we needed to head out of here uh, but I was uh, seriously considering that night as being a night that we were going to spend in the fish house and then uh, and then head for the cabin in the morning because it's it's at the time it seemed like a uh, much safer uh, alternative uh, 
I just I just uh, always err on the side of caution uh, whenever possible and this little tiny fish house has everything you need to spend the night you could you could make this place 70 80 degrees I run the uh, buddy heater on low uh, all the time it's rare 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 that we turn it up onto high I turn it up on high when I'm doing my cooking, uh, like I said, I'm just, just getting ready for lunch here. You can put a pot of water on that buddy heater, and if you put her up on high, it will come to a boil. So that's about the only time that the buddy heater goes up on high. Low is all this little tiny fish house needs to keep it 70 degrees. So I don't want to bore you with all that, but I wanted to fill you in on what a nice thing it is to have a small fish house. Uh, to come to when it is cold and uh, if you needed it for a safety shelter uh, it's here so I will see you after lunch and uh, we're still fishing we're looking for that eight pound laker today and uh, so far all I'm doing is having a nice cup of coffee in the great outdoors well thank you for coming along I hope you enjoyed my ice fishing trip of 2019 I hope to come out one more time maybe two more times I've got to go home uh, tomorrow and I'm going to take out the grandkids and we're all going out for a family day on a pond that is full of pickerel and yellow perch and with any luck we will have 30 or 40 flags for them little boys to chase around so I will see you on the next video and you have a great day